Okay, great. Excellent. So Jeff Malcolmson is our uh, Photograph Archives Manager. He has been at the Montana Historical Society since 2005. He earned his master's degree in history from Colorado State University, where he studied public history and the history of the American West. He has worked not only in Montana and Colorado, but also in Arizona, uh, working as an archivist specializing primarily in government records and photographs. So it is my pleasure to welcome Jeff Mal Malcolmson. All right, thanks for coming out this afternoon. I'm used to saying this, good, this night, but uh, we're not at night anymore. So afternoon, good afternoon. And is that, is that the mic that's kind of, we so turned down just a little bit maybe, but um, yeah, we have, we're gonna cover a lot tonight. So <laughs> we, I have a lot of slides, but I'm not even gonna tell you how many slides because that's like giving it away. But there are a lot, so there'll be times where I go quickly through um, and this is, I'm going to try to give you, it's a brief introduction to the photograph archives, and it's very uh, image heavy, so I think that's, you know, that's what we want to see. We want to see some of the photographs and get a sense. So I'm focusing on these major, major collections, and, and it's kind of uh, subjective that I select these seven particular major collections. Um, there's probably, you know, maybe a half dozen or more that probably 10 even, that I could probably reasonably say are major collections in our, in our holdings. But um, these are the seven that are most popular, uh, heavily used, um, most well-known probably. So, and maybe a couple aren't as well-known, but um, you, you'll know more about them after tonight. So, so that's, it's gonna be focused on the images, maybe not so much on the, the people behind the scenes and the staff and, and um, maybe not even so much on the, the history of, of the, the photographs that, or the, the photographers even that we take. I won't have that much time to talk about, you know, extensive biography or anything like that about people. So, um, so take this as a kind of a, an opportunity to get a taste for uh, our, some of our major collections and an introduction to it, uh, an invitation to maybe come back for more, maybe investigate uh, our digital collections where you can see a lot of the, the photos of, of these particular, from these photographers and collections. So take it as that. And it probably will go for at least 50 minutes or maybe longer. Kirby might have to get the, the old thing out. And, um, I hope not, but. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with a little bit of history background to the, uh, the photograph archives and, and the, this is Cursory, of course. I mean, it's it's just to kind of get us started and give us context for the, this collection because uh, it is it's an amazing collection. It started in the 1860s. Uh, we don't know what kind of those first photographs that they collected were. Um, there were probably some that maybe ended up you know burning up in fire in Helena in the 1870s or earlier, or whenever, um, and then they had to reconstitute the collection. Uh, but uh, they certainly started collecting photographs early on, uh, and we see, uh, we, we know they're, they're likely, you know, uh, portraits of pioneering uh, individuals in Montana's history, um, some photographs of uh, places in Montana, maybe Virginia City, Bannock, you know, so that's the beginnings. Um, through the years, through the decades, after the 1860s and the beginning of the Historical Society, uh, librarians, and there were maybe, you know, often it was just one librarian, for many years, uh, was collecting photographs. And so by the early 1970s, it's like almost for at least 100 years, they gathered about 40,000 photographs, give or take, you know, several thousand. Uh, so it's not a, that's, that might seem like a lot. It would be if, you know, if we had it piled up here, it'd be a lot of photographs. But uh, in the scheme of things nowadays, it's, it's not that much. That's not, not a whole lot for 100 plus years of, of collecting. Um, so, they, we formally started the, the photograph archives, kind of formally. Um, if you think of it as hiring a professional staff member to uh, manage the collection and look after the collection. Uh, that was done in about 1973, the early 70s, um, with some money from, I believe it was bicentennial kind of funding uh, in the mid-70s, early and mid-70s. 
that was more abundant then. And um, so they brought, they brought in a historian trained in archives from, from at U of M. Um, and started working on the collections, trying to get more intellectual control over them, physical control over them. Um, they had been getting a lot more use over the years, so they, they needed somebody to, to look after them, kind of handle the uh, increasing orders that were being made for reproductions and so on. Um, so then, kind of a land, landmark thing was the donation of uh, the Haynes Foundation collection, which included not just photographs, it included artifacts, um, papers, you know, records from the photograph business. Um, there were a lot of family records that went to the Montana State University at the time and are still there. And then we have the business records behind the Haynes family, um, and we'll talk more about Haynes, uh, multiple Haynes in people in, in, the, in the next so, uh, half an hour or so. Um, but so that was about a 19, late 70s. I think it was 78, 79. I can just, I can ask Becca and she can, yeah. <laughs> uh, and again, there were, there were multiple donations later, but I think most of the photographs came in in the late 70s. And, you know, a lot of work began to be done on those, with those photographs. And that was, that was uh, uh, almost doubling the collections, the size of collections when that, so it was about 40,000, we don't really know exactly, but uh, 40,000 photographs of various types. And I'll, I'll talk about the Haynes collection in a moment. That was huge. That was a, a big kind of uh, catalyst to, to growing the collection and getting, um, promoting the collection and, and the fact that we wanted to collect photographic materials uh, for Montana history. So then other collections came very quickly. Uh, the L.A. Huffman glass plate negatives, the uh, big bulk of that Huffman collection we have now came in 81. Uh, Evelyn Cameron by 1990, um, Warren McGee, at the end of the 90s uh, and following. Uh, so whenever we have a living donor like Warren McGee and um, like currently with Barbara Van Cleve, uh, you get, we get donations you know, over a period of time. <laughs> it's often the, um, living folks don't like to give up their negatives. That tends to be <laughs> what happens, and I understand that. Uh, Les George Collection was a big one. It came in in 2003, so they kind of keep coming. Today's Barbara Van Cleve is our, our big uh, acquisition currently. Um, so uh, this photograph, this is our one, one time to, to kind of honor and, and respect the, um, the staff person, staff people that went, went, came before us and built the photograph archives. Um, Lori Morrow on the left uh, was one of the, the historian that was hired early on as, a, as an archivist to uh, work on the collections. Becca came in with the Haynes collection uh, and, and worked for 30 plus years. And Lori worked for over 40 years on the photograph ar archives and, and managed the collection. So uh, these two folks uh, did a lot with all those collections I just mentioned and in, in kind of growing the collection. So from the early 1970s, 40,000 photographs that had been collected over 100 plus years uh, to today we have, this is not an exact number, <laughs> but I think it's actually probably over 1.1 million photographs, uh, maybe even more, but... That's what I'm willing to go up to now. We've been doing work to try to uh, get a better handle on, on uh, better estimates of large collections that we have. And so we've, we've uh, just kind of concluded that work. And we are, I think we're above 1.1 million photographs. So, so that's a huge, it's a very large collection. Uh, and so in the region, in the Pacific Northwest, that puts us probably in the top, um, I don't know, there's probably some archives that don't know how many photographs they have too, it might be larger than us, but uh, for, a, for a state photograph archives, uh, we're probably in the top five at least. Um, you know, there's large, University of Washington is a very large photograph collection. University of Alaska at Fairbanks is very large too. Um, we're, we're a little below them, but still a very large collection. Uh, and um, so that's quantity. Um, we can talk about quantity for the rest of the, or quality for the rest of the, the time. Uh, today's photo archive staff, we have uh, myself as uh, the manager of the photo archives and one senior photograph archivist, Heather Holtman. Uh, we have uh, Tom Ferris, who's our archival photographer, is on part-time currently, and uh, one support tech position, which is uh, Pam Smith, who uh, works 20 hours a week. So it's four of us right now. We have 
we often have another archivist position and hopefully we'll get that back soon. But um, those are the folks working on the collections now, I'm trying to, to keep up with them. Um, this, I'm estimating about three quarters of the collection is adequately uh, processed and cataloged, uh, which means they're described pretty well, well enough for us to get into them and use them pretty well. Um, many collections are down to individual cataloging, but um, certainly not all of them. And, and then, you know, there's probably about a quarter of the collections we have are uh, larger and smaller in size, uh, need a lot more work and, and have. So, so it's job security for us uh, to continue to be working on these things, and we do, um, but it's, it's hard uh, with the staff currently, currently as it is to, to make headway on, on unpro unprocessed materials, but we do as much as we can, and, and as well to, to do digitization, because that's, um, as we see here, there's, we have about 7,400 photos digitized available on the Montana Memory Project. Um, so it's a variety of collections. It's uh, probably over 100 plus photographers represented among these that are digitized. Um, and many of the photographers we'll talk about tonight, we have substantial digitization done for them. Um, but currently we'll, we're, um, we're planning, to, we have money secured and, and uh, in the planning stages of starting the major digi digitization with the Haynes Collection, which will start uh, in the first part of next year, 2022, and hopefully we'll get uh, over 2,000, we should have, I think it's 2,500, something like that, photographs digitized with that project with the funding that we have, um, be able to hire one and a half staff to, to help on that project uh, over the course of about two years. So we'll be doing it kind of in, uh, partly in uh, recognition of the 150th anniversary, is it, of Yellowstone National Park being founded to next year. So that will be fun uh, to get many, many Yellowstone photographs and other Haynes photographs uh, more available and accessible online. Um, but that's kind of, you know, we're, we are trying to focus a lot on digitization to get some of these uh, very large, less accessible collections um, available online. So that's what we've been doing. We've had a couple significant projects in the last few years to, to do that, both the, the Bud Lake collection, and which is, which is a Native American photograph collection, and um, the Severed Brothers uh, scrapbook photographs from Northeastern Montana were just done last year. Um, and that's about 1,500 photographs. Bud Lake was about a little over 1,000 photographs. So we're kind of ratcheting up. We're gonna do over 2,000 something with the, the Haynes collection. Um, so hopefully we'll get over that 10,000 mark of d digital photographs available online uh, in the next couple years and just go on from there. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. There's really no one place to search you know, the entire Photograph Archives collection. Um, you know, for our, our books in the library, you can just search the online catalog and you're searching all the books that are there. Um, the archives collections, the paper material, um, they have, they have a, probably more than 90% of their whole collections are described in the online catalog. So you can generally just search that and you're gonna be able to say, yeah, okay, I'm searching pretty much everything I can. But for the photo, photo archives collections, it's a little harder. You gotta, um, I've got, some basic steps to run through quickly. We usually want you to start with the Montana Memory Project because it's the digital images. You can actually see the photos. You can see the images online in that search. Um, you kind of have to, there has a learning curve to using the, the MMP. Um, you have to ser be able to search your, your topic or, or maybe search for a collection and then filter, filter the results down with some of the filter tools that are there. So I encourage you to uh, stick with it if you try to to learn how to how to search that and and you can you can browse our collection fairly easily um, it's just called photographs from the montana historical society um, and there's you know there's tens of thousands of of images on on the montana memory project that many of them aren't aren't ours from our collections there's university of montana um, lewistown public library has a lot it's thousands and so kind of to get ours to get to ours you need to know a couple things a couple tricks and i can help you with that but that's where we like people to start. But then also using the online catalog, we do have, we have a lot of our collections, a lot of, especially our small collections and um, some of the 
like the Bud Lake collection, uh, all our Native American photographs in the, the um, MHS Legacy collection, which I'll talk about, they're all cataloged individually as well as the Bud Lake Native American photos, Crow, Crow Indian photos. So there's a lot of stuff that is that is described really well on the online catalog, so that's a great place to just search for, you know, if you're looking for a particular town or a type of um, a person, a family, um, and then you can use some of the limiting uh, tools to limit your results to the photograph archives on the left. Um, that's, a, that's a really good way to search a lot of our collections. So those two things are great tools. Um, we have ways to search this, this MHS legacy photo collection, which I mentioned, um, the, our 900s, which are our most popular collection. Uh, it's, it's the stuff that existed before uh, 1973. So that, that 40,000 something uh, included about 18,000 photos, which is what these are. Um, and they're, you know, kind of your typical, uh, your, your well-known Montana pioneers, um, portraits, um, buildings, uh, town uh, landscapes, um, all kinds of photos um, that are heavily used and, and great for illustrating, you know, histories of Montana. Um, and then we have some other, we have another document we can kind of do our final kind of quick search for you to see if there's anything in your, on your topic. So it's really kind of at this point you interact with the staff if you want to keep on going and keep looking for more, uh, keep trying to do a full search of the collections. So the staff, we can search uh, our accessions, registers, and try to find any hits that might mention your, your subject matter, or your person, or uh, town, or whatever you're looking for. So several ways to get into things, and it's, it's uh, we do have individual finding aids and even databases for specific collections, larger collections. So, so there are a lot of different tools to use um, to get into the collections. All right, let's get, uh, we'll get into our more of a slideshow. Uh, these major collections, I, I mentioned the MHS Legacy Photo Collection that we'll look at first, but that was that is the material that was here before the early 1970s, before so it was first uh, organized and arranged by Lori Morrow by the, the, the beginnings of the of the photo archives. Um, so that, that collection has kind of been around the longest. Uh, and then the Haynes Collection, I'm kind of doing these in the order that they came into the photo archives, so it's sort of a bit of a history of as, as we gathered these collections and they became available um, to us and to researchers. So we'll work our way through Haynes, Huffman, Evelyn Cameron, uh, Warren McGee's railroad photos, uh, Leslie Jorad, who's a Helena photographer, and, and end with uh, a postcard collections that we have. So if you're ready, <laughs> we're gonna go, there's some of them will go pretty fast, others will go really fast and I'll try to say as much as I can and, and tell you as much as I can, but um, you know, you may just have to come up to me later and say, what was that one? <laughs> and, and we'll talk about it more you know, in person later. So if you see something, I do have numbers on a lot of these, so you can jot down the number. If you see a photo you want, you're interested in or want to know something about, jot down that number if you can real fast, but um, that will uh, that'd be something then, because we, you know, we generally find these things with their numbers with the photo numbers, uh, collection numbers. So uh, that's a very important thing to, to get from us. So this is the legacy, MHS legacy photo collection. We often call it the 900s because they're all nine, four something, you know, numbers. Uh, they're all 900 number and they're photo numbers. So if you hear us talking about the 900s, that's, this, is, this is that collection. Um, includes, uh, you know, extensive Native American photos of, of pretty much every tribal group in the, in the state. Um, every city just about is going to have a, a group of photos. Um, these were generally organized, I think they started to be organized alphabetically or at least in, there's some order to how they're organized. Um, I think at some point then it kind of maybe things get put in, in different places but um, if you find a, a number like for this, this photo on the right is from Butte in about I think Butte in the 1880s, 1890s, um, the west side of Butte. So that 946062, if you went to that photo in, a, in the binders in the, in the research center, and then you went back and, and, and after it, you're gonna find other Butte photos probably right in there. So you might find actually dozens of Butte photos um, in that neighborhood in the 900s. Uh, there's, of course, Calamity Jane on the left. Uh, um, I just kind of, I tried to pick, you know, just about a dozen or so photos from each collection or, or more in some cases, but 
just interesting ones are, this is a, a, one of our very popular photos, um, for, especially for people um, just finding it on the Montana Memory Project, because uh, it, it was, this photo was actually, this is the, the 10th Cavalry. They were um, at St. Mary, Montana. Actually, they were, um, let's get my notes here. So yeah, they're just lounging around. They had been escorting uh, General Merritt, General Merritt's party through the state. Um, so it's just a great shot of, of uh, soldiers relaxing. Uh, really shows their their what kind of clothes they wore. This photo was actually used uh, for an Amazon production recently um, because it was used by the costume designer, and they were just they just loved this photo. They was like it gave us everything, showed us everything that they needed, you know to to really make outstanding historical costumes and know what they were wearing and you know how they were wearing it. And so it was, it's a really exceptional photo. And of course, you know, there's uh, historical events that are documented in this collection um, like crazy. Um, this is the uh, historic flight, the first flight over the Continental Divide um, by the young Cromwell Dixon, who died shortly thereafter in, in Spokane and we have photographs of that tragic event that were taken as well in this collection. Um, but these are just a series of postcards that were created after the, the event. Um, and really interesting, that's Dixon there in the overcoat, uh, the second from the left, of course, facing away from the camera. Almost, uh, what, 110 years ago, that event. And then this, this historic event, which is right up the hill over here, uh, July 4th, 1899, the laying in the cornerstone for the Capitol building. And this is taken by J.P. Ball, so rather well known now, um, and an excellent photographer, African-American photographer that worked out of Helena for, for a number of years in the 19th century and took great photos. And like I said, we Native American photos. These are uh, Pigan Indians just outside of Fort Benton. Um, and I think it's about 1884, and it's taken by Dan Dutro, who's a um, Fort Benton photographer. And it's just a nice photo. Uh, this one was uh, of, this is taken on the Flathead Indian Reservation uh, by um, naturalist Morton Elrod out of the University of Montana. Um, and this is Josephine Camille and her daughter, Lucy Peer. Uh, it's about July 1906. And they're really nicely uh, dressed up in their horses as well. So really great photographs of Native Americans uh, from turn of the century, even the 19th century, and then these 20th century views. Um, Blackfeet, it says Blackfeet Chiefs. Um, from, the, from the 1940s, it's prob probably during World War II. Um, they're celebrating the United States flag. Um, and the gentleman on the right, um, which is a really striking photo, is um, Patsy Baptiste Lumphrey, uh, Salish um, dancer at a powwow in Arley in 1940. Uh, there's a whole series of these photos by Rex Haight in the, in the 900s from that Arley powwow from 1940. Um, so of course there's the you know, early early photos of, there aren't a whole lot, but early photos of, like this, this is Bannock uh, in the 1860s. Uh, there really weren't a whole lot of, of you know, street scenes or, or town scenes taken in the, in the 1860s. I wish there were more, but, um, but we do have a, a number of them in this collection. Um, Virginia City as well as Bannock and um, Helena and other places, so. other mining, mining camps and so on. Um, this is kind of an example of a, a early 20th century commercial um, buildings. There's a lot of photographs of commercial buildings in many different towns. This is in Butte, First National Bank. And I love those uh, awnings, uh, keeping the sun out. And you know, when you're at a, a mile high, the sun's a little bit stronger, I think, so it's probably a good idea. And uh, landmark buildings are represented very well in this collection. This is the um, Boulder Hot Springs. And this photo's really, it's been, it's interesting, it's been, um, it's been tampered with. <laughs> it's been colored up and, and gussied up a bit. Uh, which if you look at it really close, you can kind of see the, there's lines around the windows and the architecture was sort of outlined, I think. And 
So it's, it's interesting to see that. And of course, there's lots of these photos, portraits in the 900s. And so who can name these individuals? Man on the left. Becca, you do not get to guess. <laughs> Anybody want to take a guess? No? That's Granville Stewart. That's a, um, it is uh, from a, uh, what's the type? I can't, I just drew a blank on the third photo. Anyway, it's from probably the eight, anywhere from 1860s to 1870s, but pretty early. And um, on the right, anybody want, that's a harder guess. But it's Charles Broadwater. Um, of course, it had the Broadwater Hotel built, but he was also a, you know, an active um, member of the Democratic Party in the 19th century, uh, and a Helena businessman, of course. So those, and then we have 20th century portraits as well. Anybody want to guess who these folks are? On man on the left, left center. No, Manuel Taylor Gordon, Taylor Gordon, and on the right, who's the the lady? Becca knows. <laughs> Kirby knows. You, you guys know, don't you? Dor Dorothy? Dorothy Johnson, <laughs> the author. Uh, Dorothy Johnson. Yeah, both of those from the 1960s. And so there's, you know, there's pretty good representation of, of uh, significant people from the mid 20th century, even, even back to the early 20th century and, and the 19th century. So it's, it's a really good general collection of, of portraits throughout the 900s. So. Outstanding place to find, not just you know, standard portrait, nice uh, photo of somebody, see what they look like. All right, that, that kind of wraps up the, the 900s. We'll jump, jump on or continue on to the Haynes Foundation Collection. And it's called the Haynes Foundation Collection because uh, it was donated after the death of Jack Ellis Haynes um, by his, his wife, Isabella Haynes. Um, she was the heir to this, this great kind of legacy of the Haynes family started by, the photographic business started by uh, F.J. Haynes. So this is, like I said, is about 40,000 photos, um, more than half negatives, uh, at least so over 9,000 glass plates. Uh, the rest are, there's, the rest of the negatives are a lot of nitrate film negatives. So it, it, it presents a preservation issue for us with both the glass and the nitrate film uh, or have different needs for preserving them. Um, you know, we just had our earthquake drill today, but if we ever had an earthquake, uh, we might lose a lot of glass negative collections. So uh, we have some, some means to try to stop them from falling off the shelves, but if there was a strong enough earthquake, uh, we, would, we would lose a lot. And so we've, we have actually printed, done some archival printing of glass plates, but not in all cases, I don't think so. Um, it's a concern and part of our managing of the collections. But. So the Haynes Collection, F.J. Haynes was, uh, here he is, uh, a couple different instances of him. Um, he took an early trip, 1880, up the uh, Missouri River, and that's him at the Great Falls of the Missouri on the left with his stereo camera, looking very, you know, intrepid, <laughs> which, you know, in 1880, traveling up the Missouri and hiking out there to the falls is, is pretty intrepid. There's no town nearby, so... Um, Great Falls was yet to be created. And there he is on the right. He's kind of, that was a, a portrait of him in a studio, actually, commemorating his, uh, his early uh, winter expedition into Yellowstone National Park, which, I think, is, is it 1884, Becca? Do you remember? I can't, I can't remember right now, but um, he did two different winter expeditions, and, and they were, there's a nice article in, the, in our magazine about... Uh, his exploits there, um, but was a, was a famous a famous endeavor. He was well known for, and of course he uh, was the official photographer for the uh, Northern Pacific Railroad by the early 1880s, and then also they sent him to shoot Yellowstone National Park in 1881. And he first visited, and he fell in love with the place and saw a great opportunity for business, uh, for photographic business. He became the first concessionaire in the park uh, in 1884. He also operated the, the famous uh, Haynes Palace studio car, which people would see, you know, moving down the tracks or coming to their town and 
So he could actually had this mobile studio to uh, take portraits of people in you know towns along the railroad. So he did a lot of portrait work, I'm sure, in, uh, with that. Um, uh, he was ended up being based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. That's where his, his family lived mostly, uh, but then also spent you know a lot of summers, all the summers at Mammoth Hot Springs uh, in the park, uh, running the the national park business. So. A lot of his photos are have to do with railroad construction uh, in the, early, the 1880s. Uh, like this, this is the Bismarck, the bridge over uh, the Missouri River in Bismarck, North Dakota, in Dakota Territory at that time. I think it was 1885. Let me catch up with my notes here. It was 1883, um, Bismarck Bridge being finished. That was quite an engineering feat. Um, and he has, there's a lot of photos that document the building of that bridge in particular that are really cool. Um, so this photo is, of course, Western Montana. It's along Clark's Fork. And we see uh, some men on the, on the rail, the hand car. Um, they are identified as, as five Chinese men and, and two other white men on the, on the hand car. Um, and this is taken about in 1890. So, not sure exactly what, what work they're doing at that time, but um, it's a really cool photo and good representation of uh, the railroad in western Montana. You've got to follow the rivers, and you don't have much room between <laughs> the river and the canyon walls in some places. And then uh, Haynes, of course, is, is documenting the uh, tourist attractions or places to stay along the, the rail lines around, along the northern Pacific. So he, he shoots this photo of um, the Broadwater Hotel and the Natatorium just outside of Helena here in 1890. Um, and of course his Yellowstone photos are, are a huge part of this collection. Um, he was active from you know 18, really 1870s, but in, in shooting Yellowstone 1881 and following all the way till his, he kind of retired in the, the 1910s. Um, and turned the business over to his son. But uh, these are some of the first views, or earlier views. These are from 1884, I believe, um, and kind of really show, you know, the quality of his work. And um, his, uh, that's him on the footbridge there at, at Excelsior Geyser and along the, the Firehole River. And that's about 18, what is it, 1883. And that's his assistant, I guess, with the, the stereo camera on the left. But he really got to go all over the park and um, you know full access to all the sites. Um, he, he traveled around with the like this in this photo, the Minnesota National Guard who was uh, protecting the park at this this particular time in 1893. And he's that's actually him there on the right, F.J. Haynes, on his horse. Um, so there are a lot of photos that you know he's not in. <laughs> These just happen to be the ones I, I chose that, that he actually shows up in the photo. Um, but it is it's a really an interesting shot. This is at Yancey Hole, um, the the hotel. Actually, John Yancey is the man on the left there, left of the column, standing in the middle in front of the log cabin, which is his hotel. Um, very early establishment in in Yellowstone National Park, and probably a good place to spend the night if you were, have been riding around. With, on your horse, or these guys are, this is infantry, so they're, they've been walking <laughs> throughout the park. And there's also, you know, most, almost every 19th century photographer in Montana in particular is gonna uh, shoot Native American portraits because they want, they were, um, there's a market for them to, to sell them to people in the East, uh, to people visiting, um, and um, Haynes is no exception to that. This is Chief Littlehead, these are, uh, Chief Littlehead is Crow on the left, and we have uh, Crow Flies High, which who is Grovant in the middle, and um, on the right is Boy in the Water, um, smiling slightly for us. Uh, is also Crow, and these are all taken in 1883. It's um, really good, good portrait work. Um, this is one of a again, I probably is our most popular photo, um, almost always being ordered several times a year. Uh, especially for documentaries and, and uh, you know, to be used in, in books and publications. Uh, of course, it's the 25th uh, Infantry Bicycle 
um, Corps that, that uh, made the famous, a couple famous trips from Fort Missoula, Montana, to Yellowstone, and then later the next year they went, uh, this, is, this is in 1896 and 1897, they went from Missoula to uh, St. Louis on an even longer trip, trying to test the utility of bicycles for, for um, U.S. soldiers. And it's really interesting stories, and, and these great photos are just a little detailed to kind of see. Uh, one of the great things with the Haynes, Haynes glass plate negatives um, are that they, uh, they're very high quality, of course, so often eight by 10 size, and uh, so you can get a lot of really good details out of them. Uh, so there's, there's F.J. Haynes near the end of his career showing off these mammoth prints uh, that were, were made for, um, uh, for the Union Pacific, I guess. And he did turn the business over to his son, Jack Ellis Haynes, in uh, 1916, I believe. Um, and so Jack Ellis Haynes just kind of dove into it, and um, he actually did use, use a film camera, like in this photo. And we have, we have one of his films uh, digitized and available on our YouTube channel. If you look for uh, the moving image uh, portion of the, on our YouTube channel, you'll find this along with dozens of other um, digitized um, moving images from our collections. So that's a, it's a good example because it's an early 1920s uh, film of, of uh, Yellowstone, which is it's really interesting to watch. Uh, but most of Jack Ellis Haynes' work was done on film and of you know natural scenes in the park. Um, he's very good at uh, capturing dramatic uh, scene on the right and dramatic scenery as well. And but one of the best things about his portion of the collection is uh, that he's starting in 1916, uh, roughly, and I mean, he did, he did shoot photos before that, but so he's starting with, you know, early infrastructure development of Yellowstone National Park for tourists and, and going um, all the way through the 20th century, the mid 20th century, this is the first automobile in the park, officially, um, arriving at the Old Faithful Inn. Uh, and so he's documenting that and, and then all these, I'm gonna kind of go quickly through these to move us along. Um, the automobile really invades the park quickly, 1916, 1917, and 1920, uh, lots of buses for those tourists to get down at Mammoth, Mammoth Hotel. Um, lining up at the uh, Roosevelt Arch in Gardner, Montana, and of course the transportation headquarters in Gardner, and showing the development of the administrative infrastructure of the park as well, the headquarters, the Mammoth Hot Springs, and some of the early tourist um, buildings as well, but, and also the remnant of the Fort, Fort Yellowstone buildings on the right. Um, so lots of photos of, of buildings, hotels, uh, tourists visiting. Uh, this is the Canyon Lodge in 1929, unloading you know, one of the buses. Uh, some of their cabins at the Canyon Lodge and the Canyon Hotel, which no longer exists, unfortunately. Uh, this is about 1931, and uh, lots of great photos of it. The interiors, which are amazing. Um, this is kind of, I believe, the lounge area coming into the Canyon Hotel. Stairway. Um, of course, lots of uh, photos of people interacting with bears as you know, everybody did up until, I don't know, the 1970s or whenever, whenever we had to stop and keep those bears, you know, out in the woods, please. Um, you know, people would feed them, of course, and photographers were there to take those pictures. And Jack Ellis Haynes is, is one of those. Uh, then we get into the post-World War II era, which, you know, was just great with this Jack Ellis Haynes photos. Um, you see just lots more people, of course, and this super increase in visitors and cars and the shops. I think, that, I think that's one of the Haynes shops at Old Faithful, but I'm not sure. 1940s, 1950s, these are the 1950s in the hotels. Um, the Mammoth Hotel on the right, their lounge, and the, I believe the Canyon Hotel dining area in the left there, 1952. And, you know, it's a great, great photo of boy fishing. This is near Fishing Bridge, 1953. Uh, so Jack Ellis Haynes uh, died in the 1960s, um, and then his wife, like I said, Isabel, uh, had to decide where, what she was going to do with this 
legacy of, of all these uh, photographic materials and records of their business. Um, fortunately, uh, she decided to give, give them to us. So uh, that really started our, got our collections rolling. Um, so now we're gonna make a, a change quickly to uh, Eastern Montana and spend a little time in Eastern Montana. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go through Huffman and um, Evelyn Cameron as well. Uh, so Huffman, L.A. Huffman arrived in Miles City in 1870, at the end of 1879, and uh, was to take over the, as the post photographer at Fort Keogh, which is the military installation just outside of Miles City at the time, uh, and started photographing all kinds of scenes around the area. Um, was, a, was an avid hunter, of course, there he is with his uh, buffalo, and one of the outstanding things about his collection is the uh, the buffalo hunting photographs that he took you know, from about 1879 to uh, into the early 1883 or so, 83, 84, I think, um, are just outstanding. Uh, there aren't, they're pretty rare. Uh, there weren't a lot of photographers uh, in a position like he was that near, you know, buffalo herds to go out and, and document what was going on in the early 1880s um, or to participate in it because he did. <laughs> course, um, but the, it's one of the, uh, the, the best parts of this collection as far as its documentation of, you know, the end of a, of a monumental um, ecological thing in, on the plains. Um, he was there to, to document. So also there's a lot of photos of, of Miles City, of course, and this is a nice early 1883 photograph with the, the Cosmopolitan Theater on the left, a um, little cow town. Uh, he, he took a lot of photos of Native Americans around uh, Fort Keogh, Miles City. Uh, this is one of uh, his well-known photos of a Sioux um, camp just outside, of, just, um, near, near Fort Keogh on the Tongue River. Uh, it has been colored in, in, in other, other prints that uh, you might find online that are really, really nice looking. Um, of course, he did his the Native American portraiture as well. And uh, these are uh, two Cheyenne. Uh, this Mrs. White Elk on the left, smiling, and uh, somewhere taken somewhere 1880s to 90s, um, not sure. And on the right is Red Sleeve, um, also Cheyenne, taken by 1879, so very early uh, after his arrival at Fort Keogh. And he said, uh, Huffman said about Red Sleeve, uh, said he Red Sleeve, sometimes called red-armed panther, a good scout, a good shot, and a royal good hunting companion, as I know. Uh, so he often knew his subjects or got to know them very well, and um, he, he did love to, to hunt and take other uh, people visiting the area out hunting and would often take his, take his uh, camera. Um, but one of the, the things we know Huffman for, of course, best is his documentation of ranching life around Miles City in eastern Montana. Um, he ranched himself, of course, uh, and just was an amazing photographer out in the field with his camera on his horse, uh, taking these photographs uh, and, and keep preserving them and then selling them over the course of the next you know, several decades to really kind of promote the, the, the cowboy lifestyle or the cowboy image, the image of the cowboy in the West um, and this is pie biter, the chuck wagon scene. Um, the cook, Mex John, and I don't know why they didn't just call him Juan, you know, because his, his name's, they give him his Mexican John, they called him, but we would have called him Juan where I grew up, so. Uh, great photograph with his pies and the, the clock, right, you know. <laughs> just excellent scene. Uh, he certainly documented not just cows, but uh, sheep um, around eastern Montana. It's just a, you know, watering the sheep on the, I think that was the, the Tongue River, but I'm not sure. Oh, Powder River, sorry. I'm getting caught up here. All right, so Huffman, we, we do have, I should say, um, we have... I think nearly 700, about 700 photographs digitized from the Huffman collection. So um, that's probably about half of the total, you know, um, 
negatives and prints uh, combined. But um, so there's a lot, a lot of good Huffman photos to look at on the Montana Memory Project. And so getting into Evelyn Cameron, sort of a neighbor nearby and a contemporary uh, for Huffman. Uh, and I think we all know her pretty well. Is anybody who hasn't heard of Evelyn Cameron? Can, I had an intern uh, who's working with us right now, and she uh, was it. Uh, sh she's writing about Evelyn Cameron for us to, to put a thing on. I guess it was you know, somebody else I, I re met recently that said, "Who's Evelyn Cameron?" <laughs> it's like, oh, you got a you got a lot to to catch up on with Evelyn Cameron because she's an amazing story. Uh, of course, you know, a British born. Um, you know, higher society person from, from Britain, uh, comes to, the, uh, to Montana on her honeymoon in the 18, 1890s, uh, moves here with her, her husband, uh, Ewan Cameron, and um, they take up a homestead and try to survive on uh, the, the prairies of eastern Montana. And learns photography at the same time, uh, teaches herself uh, along with, with, I guess she was taught by some, some friends as well, so. We have a great glass plate collection and film negative collection of hers. And just to run through several great examples of her work, she's kind of our favorite among our staff um, because just her work is so outstanding and just kind of her person, personality and who she was. Um, so this is a 1905 view and just, just kind of what she does with, often she um, want to include the landscape with in the portrait of the people she was photographing. Um, and you know, maybe people from outside of Montana might wonder why, why in the world would you? But I mean, just look at, this, at that scene, um, the, the landscape around, um, and to show you know, these women and children, there they are, right in the midst of it, um, living and surviving in the wilds of eastern Montana, on the Great Plains. Um, so she was great at, at capturing kind of social scenes. This is just a, a break uh, for um, sheep shears to, to maybe have a little boxing match in their downtime. Uh, and everybody's just kind of hanging around, a makeshift boxing ring with a couple kids in the front. And she was great at setting up a scene like that or, or taking advantage of it. Uh, here's the sheep shears, um, also another break time in, a, in the shade. Um, looking worse for the wear from their work, but great, great shot of, of Montana people working. Uh, another, you know, uh, hang scene, um, one of the Williams sisters who were friends of the Camerons, uh, bringing some relief to these workers. Um, she was great at capturing, you know, children, uh, although it was very difficult and she didn't like it so much, but um, she got this shot and, and it's a wonderful, wonderful view of a child riding a pig. <laughs> uh, a lot of picnics. It was a great time for her to, to be taking photographs of, of Eastern Montana folks, um, relaxing. And uh, one of the great things with her, with her photos is we, do, we have been able to identify or, or there was information along with them. So um, that was a 4th of July picnic. This is a Children's Day picnic at Cabin... Cabin Creek in uh, Prairie County, I guess, um, 1913. Oops, let me go back. 1913, um, and if you miss it, there are there is a somebody photo bombing. Um, just back behind the left, the ladies on the left with the hats. There's a little boy, and I think there's a there's another little boy a little further up the tree. So, <laughs> you know, Evelyn Evelyn saw that, and she didn't do anything about it, maybe she tried, I don't know. But again, they were kids, she probably, and you know, it turns out it just makes a, a great picture. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's a wonderful scene, just kind of in and of itself, to, to take a portrait. I mean, often she would draw back. This, in this case, she kind of draws in to the subjects and frames them with the, the trees and, um, and then allows the boys to frolic behind <laughs> and, and to get their attention they wanted. But uh, but doesn't ruin the photo at all, and just actually makes it better. Uh, she took landscape views as well. Uh, here's a few. That's her husband Ewan on the horse. Um, that's Pedestal Rocks, uh, north of Fallon, which is where they lived up in that country. Uh, it's about 1910. 
and another scene from their, their ranch property north of Fallon, north of the Yellowstone River, and those, around those rock formations. Uh, it says it's Custer's Pillar and Panther Rock, the Yellowstone River in the background in about 1904. And just wonderful landscapes of eastern Montana. And the Yellowstone River, which was often nearby um, in her photos, or often in the scene. And that wraps it up for her. Again, we have about 650 of her photos that have been digitized, um, and a lot of the work of, of Becca Cole back there to, to make those available um, over the years. Okay, the railroad just smashed through Evelyn Cameron's photos, and so now we are at the Warren McGee collection, um, a very large collection, again, probably larger than the Haynes, although I think maybe, maybe there's more Haynes than we even know. But, uh, but Warren was a, a railroader, worked for the uh, Northern Pacific from about 1930, I don't know, 35, 36, somewhere in there, uh, maybe 37 when I think this photo was taken. That's him in front of that, that kind of scary looking engine. <laughs> Um, it's shortly after he started working for the railroad, but he took his camera along with him, of course, and, and then on his days off, I think he took his camera out and to, he wanted to take photographs of every engine that, that was run on the Northern Pacific and other railroads as well. And he tried, and he, he amassed this, this huge collection, 17,000 plus um, black and white film negs and prints that we have. Um, those are very well um, described. We have individual descriptions that Warren provided. Um, and we have them uh, in a database, so uh, very accessible. Uh, not online, unfor unfortunately. Uh, but also there's a very substantial color component to this collection, um, which is, uh, presents preservation issues for us, but uh, a lot of color negatives, 17 or 13,000, a uh, number of prints along with those, um, and another 13,000 plus color slides. So this, he kept shooting into the, the 1950s, 60s, with the 70s with color and this continued. So uh, amazing amount of photographs. A lot of them, as we will go quickly through here, let's move that locomotive over, get in there. Yeah, the roundhouse at Livingston. Um, this, is, uh, this was used on the cover of a, one of our recent books on uh, railroads in Montana. Uh, the, and uh, is, I think it's just west of Bozeman Pass, approaching the tunnel, I think. Uh, winter scene, which makes for great steam, you know, coming up. <laughs> so he's really, really great, did a great job of documenting uh, steam engines throughout the, the kind of the waning years of uh, the use of steam. Um, great shot of the depot. Uh, we don't get a lot of buildings necessarily in, in War McGee's photos, but when you do, they're, it's wonderful. Um, so few and far between, and when you find them, it's, they're, they're excellent. A lot of, lot of locomotives. And this is a great scene, just you know, going up. Again, I think that might be his car parked over there or somebody's, uh, which kind of helps the photo and adds a little scale and um, framing for the photo there. But there's a couple helper engines pushing up the up Bozeman Pass again, I believe. So. Uh, there's a scene at uh, Red Lodge, the depot. And you see they're unloading some freight and uh, there's a bus, early bus. This is 1939, September 1939. And, you know, Warren McGee actually lists the individuals that were working on the engine. So he knew these, he knew the people were working, he knew the people in the photos. He documented who they were. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, and, to, you know, to get some of the, the scene here, the late 1930s, uh, going on to Red Lodge. Here comes another locomotive. This one's coming uphill. Uh, this is at this is actually Hangman's Hill in, near Spokane, um, just to show you that there um, he traveled outside of Montana, and he took photos, of course. Uh, we got this great one in Washington State. There's also Idaho, uh, the Dakotas, um, even Texas. Uh, so he was all over the place and and shooting railroads wherever he went. He collected historic railroad photos. This is a um, Ronald Nixon photo of Great Northern and the Northern Pacific trains um, passing or, you know, they, I'm sure they stopped them there for, so he could take the picture. But uh, so Warren collected historic photos as well and those are in the collection. 
Uh, this is near, this is in between Boulder and Basin, so uh, along the Boulder River, I believe, looks like, must be. Uh, wonderful shot. Um, I want to make a poster of this one. <laughs> uh, another, another uh, it's coming up just west of Livingston, up the grade toward Bozeman Pass, Northern Pacific engine, but got to be in winter with all that wonderful steam, the, the late evening light, I guess, or the late day light coming from the east or the west and yeah, west all right so he gets out of the steam steam era and gets some diesel engines this is here in helena actually helena valley the scratch gravel hills in the distance kind of near the fairgrounds near 10 mile creek area there and that was a that was a great northern uh engine so he's he has taking other than Northern Pacific. I threw a couple of Butte photos in. This is a, a diesel engine in Butte because, because I showed this at the, the conference in Butte a little while ago. Um, great gnarly engine at Butte. You can see the, um, the, the mines in the background and just a really cool, cool scene. Uh, he's got some aerial photos, the, the shops and the roundhouse at um, at Livingston, of course, and that's where he, he lived, of course, if you don't know Warren, um, he w did live in Livingston all those years, um, except when he was in the military, I suppose. Uh, he did take some color, like I, I mentioned earlier, so that I wanted to give you a few examples of those uh, that, that I could. Um, they're really, really neat to see the color after you see so much black and white, but uh, thanks to Warren, there he is, typing away in his basement, um, documenting his photographs that he's taking. He did for decades, uh, most of his life. His father was a railroader before him, so this is just in his blood, and uh, he was successful. And so now we have this amazing legacy of railroad photography from him. Okay, we're, we're coming in for a landing, sorry. <laughs> uh, Leslie Jord, this is number six, right? I think. Leslie Jord, I'll go fast here. This is an enormous collection. Um, thought it was probably our largest, but now I know it's not. <laughs> but it is our largest of a single photographer, um, certainly, and documenting a single town, primarily Helena. Um, 75,000 plus uh, film negatives, probably only about 15, 20% nitrate, but small amount of color transparencies. Um, we've only had this collection for less than 20 years, so uh, we just processed it um, mostly <laughs> processed it in a major way. We spent about two years working on it from 2017 to 2019 and following. Or actually, yeah, I guess it was the end of 2017 to, to even into 2020. We still, still got a couple series to go, but, but George took photographs from the time he was about 16 years old all the way to the end of his life um, and was everywhere and everybody knew him as the, you know, the photo guy. Um, took photos at schools, at churches, at organizations, at different social groups. Uh, these are the series that we have, 13 different series representing the collect his work. Um, he was very, also very good at documenting his collection. At least he, he documented on the, the, the negative envelopes, and then so we had those along with the negatives. Um, primarily a negative collection, so it's a little harder to use, um, but is, uh, is a wonderful collection in documenting Helena from you know, the early 20th century on. Uh, and the bigger parts of the collection are these lots of commercial businesses that he took photographs for. He was a commercial photographer primarily and um, took a lot of portraits, portraiture, and usually, usually went to people's houses. He didn't do studio portraiture per, um, per se. He would actually shoot in their homes. So um, it's kind of neat when you can see the inside of a home in the 1930s or the 1940s or the 1950s uh, to be able to see someone's living room and or their Christmas tree and the family standing next to it or something. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting potential uses for that, this collection in that way. Um, schools, there's special events. He took a tremendous amount of photographs of the 1935 earthquakes, um, vigilante parades from the 1920s to the 1950s, 60s, whenever he stopped. Uh, wedding photos we still have. Um, maybe not. Maybe won't get a lot of use, but someday somebody's going to be doing <laughs> a cultural history of weddings, which... Um, Martha Cole already did for Montana, but um, it's a perfect collection for that. And we, so we do have individual access, you know, to 
we can search for a family name and uh, in an Excel spreadsheet for for all of those series. Um, we can search for a company name or uh, individuals, all kinds of things. So I want to give you just a quick run through from the early 19, 1915. Oh, so we'll go back to that. So Jord was actually born just just west of Carroll College. Um, bef I think before the the college building was even built, maybe. But and then he came to live just just on the south side, south edge of the campus now. His house is still there. Um, it's where the, I think the ROTC was maybe there for a while, and now it's, it had, and it, yeah, it's the St. Francis building or whatever, so St. Francis of Assisi building, right on uh, Lindale. So, so kind of 1915, he's 16 years old, taking that photo, and through the years, uh, a lot of great street scenes, of course, in Helena, um, the trains, the electric rail system, and um, this is where his, his business actually came to reside on Jackson Street, commercial photo shop. Uh, more of the trains and their garage, which became the AA garage and for gas. And they sponsored a football team, of course, and they sponsored a bowling team. And he took their photo and had them turn around. And uh, more of the garage, the interior of the garage. This is a 19, I think it's the 30s, um, 1930 scene, June 1930 at uh, Main Street and and uh, Sixth Avenue. Uh, the power block on the left and the city, the I guess it was the post office, the federal building up the street there at the end of the street, and the Montana Club on the right, a little down the street. Great scene. Uh, he he, like a, the the introductory photo that showed him wearing his you know, his, his uh, aerial, his airplane attire. He, he did take some aerial photos of, of the area, of course, and enjoyed that. Uh, this is a great dramatic shot of Carroll College and, and Helena. Uh, he climbed up into the Civic Center Tower and shot a series of, of views to make kind of a panoramic, uh, starting on the right, you know, starting on the west, 1937 in August, showing Helena as it was at that time. Great views, and he did have color transparencies. Like I said, in the 50s, he shot some. Very limited number, but um, they're pretty neat to have. Okay, last collection, postcard collection. Everybody's hanging in there, right? <laughs> Good. All right, so we have two different postcard collections. We, we had some uh, photomechanical postcards, which are kind of printed ones with, they're made up of lots of uh, men, uh, photomechanically produced dots, you know, that make up the image based on a photograph often, or some images. Um, they include, uh, just like examples here, the, the greeting cards, kind of the holiday greeting cards that were popular in the early 20th century, birthday cards, you know, Valentine's, uh, really nice selection of them. They, these are all in the PC1 collection, the postcard, our main postcard collection. It's over 20,000, um, and it was combined with a whole bunch, with thousands and thousands that were uh, we got we purchased from uh, Tom Mulvaney of East Helena, um, but we also got uh, real photo postcards from him, and that makes up that the PAC 2013-50 collection there, um, which is over 10,000 photos of sh mostly towns, uh, town views, and uh, people, individuals, all kinds of scenes um, all over the state. So it's just an outstanding collection to use for people looking for you know just a few images of particular buildings, special um, events that happened. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you some examples real quick here and we'll, we'll wrap up. But uh, these are both primarily organized by place right now and uh, they're still still being uh, actively worked on um, trying to get the, the PC1 collection numbered right now. Um, and uh, one of our volunteers uh, is plowing through that one, you know, once a week coming in, helping us number that collection so we can get it more, get it ready for digitization and use. And um, So an example of some of the Mulvaney real photos, and these are actually a photograph, real photos printed on a postcard backing. And they were very, very popular in the 1910s, 20s, 30s, and a little bit later maybe, but mostly that period, early 20th century. Uh, rural scene, Alhambra, Hot Springs, um, 
you know, if you're visiting there, you want to get this postcard and send it to somebody and say, look at the time I'm having. <laughs> and a lot of the postcards do have messages on the back. But, um, some don't, some are unused. But, you know, this great uh, town scene of Big Sandy with the, you know, the new water tower, just, you know, boom, there it is. <laughs> it looks like it looks like it's an uh, alien spacecraft has just landed <laughs> in some ways, but um, great shot. And uh, dude ranch scene, uh, of course, if you're at the dude ranch, you want to send this back east to your family, um, where east meets west. Uh, Easterners, hold down, put your knee on that cow and that calf, and <laughs> that calf's neck, and we're going to brand him. Having fun. Uh, this, this is a big uh, demonstration or rally, uh, uh, probably, probably has something to do with World War I, I'm guessing. Uh, maybe it's 4th of July, 1917, uh, in Chinook at the a county courthouse and the school in the background there too. It's a really neat scene. So they pretty much, uh, these are unique real photo postcards. Any, anything could be put on here. This, this is a, a view that's very rare. Um, that, you know, there's really no photograph that I know of that shows the speculator mine disaster as it was happening because um, the fire did burn for quite a while. Uh, so, you know, a photographer uh, took a took a view of the, the fire actually happening there. There's fire at Speculator Mine, smoke coming out. Um, so that's the only one that I know of that exists, uh, showing the, the ex exterior scene at the mine itself. And so then the, the photomechanical postcards, which are, you know, sometimes you can see the dot pattern. They're maybe a little less, uh, um, less quality in, in the image, but uh, just as good at documenting towns and places and buildings all around Montana. This is Stockett, uh, the coal, coal mining town up in uh, is it Cascade County, I guess. And of course they colorized photographs, or fo the photos that they made these out of, which is a neat effect and uh, kind of novel for the early 20th century to have color this way. So, uh, manufactured photomechanical process, but sort of a scene of Billings and a U of M football game, quite different than what it looks nowadays, but still it's in color and it's kind of a neat shot of the campus in Missoula and people up on the hill watching, <laughs> but quite a, quite a neat scene. And a big hotel, this is the um, General Custer Hotel in Billings, and uh, I think 19... 40s, maybe 1950, right about. Uh, we get into the 1960s. This is the an updated uh, Rimrock Lodge in Billings, near the Rimrock. And you can see the nice interiors, um, recently updated in, for 1960s fashions, probably 1950s, but it's, it's about 1960 photograph. Um, so it, it's ni nice how it takes us into the 50s and the 60s with the color uh, views coming in. Of course, I had to put a Virginia City image in somewhere in here. So we have Bannock, Virginia City, and we're covered. But this is kind of, I love the family walking down the sidewalk, the planks, their Western clothes on. <laughs> you know. And the last one, uh, I couldn't resist uh, showing you the, the wonderful event that, you know, that, that causes people to gather at the depot lunch lunchroom. <laughs> And why would you want to buy a postcard that's going to is showing you the the badger and dog fight at the Glasgow Depot, you know, and it says one of the favorite sports of this lively little city, <laughs> <laughs> Glasgow, Montana, right next to the trains. You can catch the badger and dog fight as you're getting on, just just about to hop onto the train and go over to Haver or something for the day. It's kind of nice. Uh, that is that wraps up the, the postcards and the the entire presentation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it got, gave you some, uh, I don't know, some uh, idea of what we have, but also some uh, idea of maybe what you, some things you could come look for in the photo archives and the extent of our collections and, and just what, what a treasure it is that we have. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, questions. <laughs> you can just come volunteer. <laughs>
you can come visit any come visit any time. We are we are generally open. Um, uh, we have been open by invitation, but uh, you can usually stop in at the research center uh, when so Tuesday through Friday, um, nine to noon and one to four. Uh, but then we can you can open you know if you if you give us a call or something we can uh, make some time other times of the week. So we're always glad to help people looking for photos. Any any other questions or? All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you.